Marcus Enke, PC Instruments. What can I do for you? Yes, calibrating, verifying and adjusting. ISO calibrating also works calibration, yes. We have to test if the device is able to be calibrated. And you would like calibration for 36 months? Hello and a warm welcome to PC Instruments. As you have seen today, it is all about the large theme of calibrating, verifying and adjusting. And what sort of differences are there at all? Verifying and calibrating, what is the difference? Basically, it is all about to compare the is value with the set point. Nevertheless, there are differences to note. The verifying is the confirmation of the conformity of our measuring device to conform of the validation of the required verifying law. This test can only be done by the legislative body and only the devices can be verified that have a verification authorization. Compulsory devices are those which are mainly for consumer protection. You can usually say those are always devices which are used for a measurement where afterwards something is exchanged for money. For example, filling up at the petrol station or in a power box the electric meter, the water meter or a simple example also on the market the grocery seller or the butcher. In these cases it is always so that for a measurement of goods money is required and to protect the consumer is the verifying introduced and from the governmental authority verified. All devices which do not fall under the verifying law but have to be checked are calibrated. By calibrating the differences are the DAKKS calibration and a so-called ISO or works calibration. The DAKKS calibrations are only allowed to be done by calibration laboratories from the DAKKS, the German accreditation body, after they are accredited after the DIN 17025. Through this it is ensured that the used test standard is traceable to the primary norm of the TTB. It is ensured that under exact environmental surroundings for the measurement necessary, the work is done and also special necessary personnel is appropriately trained and has the appropriate knowledge to do this measurement. A DAKKS calibration certificate is a reliable document and is worldwide and knowledge. The question when should a DAKKS calibration be done or must can be answered difficultly from calibration laboratory because it depends on the application area. It always depends on what the measurement has for an influence of the end product. Let's take for example the manufacture of a hydraulic pump. It is delivered with a manometer and before delivery the manufacturer tests the hydraulic pump. If the display of his manometer with the calibrated test piece corresponds here a DAKKS calibration should be done. It looks different with the same product when we stay with the hydraulic pump for example by the production of the nameplate if the employee for his measuring slide a DAKKS calibration needs. This measurement has no great influence of the quality of the instrument and here a DAKKS calibration is not needed. Calibration certificates which do not comply with the specifications or accredited laboratories from the DAKKS accomplished are called ISO or work calibration certificates. 
and can be seen as an alternative to the DAKKS certificate when it is about measurement of test equipment which are seen as correct but do not need to be seen as normal. These are cheaper in the price and are sufficient for the test equipment to monitor after the DIN ISO 9001. That is why the name ISO calibration is often used. That is all to the two themes, verifying and calibrating. Another often asked question is what is an adjustment? An adjustment is often hand in hand with a calibration. The calibration is, we have already learned, that the pure inspection of the should and is values, should there be a deviation, can the is value be adjusted? This process is called adjustment. The question if a device can be calibrated can only be answered with yes. Because every measuring device I can calibrate, that means the measurement fits the shown value. With a clean process that can always be accomplished. The real question that is hidden behind this, does it make any sense to calibrate such a device? We had the same theme which we have already talked about. And often you have to ask if it makes any sense to make a calibration, especially in low cost regions. The calibration of a measuring instrument is exactly as expensive as the measuring instrument itself. This decision if a new measuring instrument should be purchased or if the old device should be calibrated can only the customer himself choose. The same counts for the calibration interval. By verifying laws, we have prescribed intervals where a device has to be re-verified. By the calibration, it would be specified by the customer. He can only, on the basis of his sequences, based on the applications, based on the importance, decide how oft or in which interval a device should be calibrated. The customer should always keep something in mind that a calibration, only a time recording, that means a calibration certificate shows only on that date, in those circumstances, these measured values were achieved. When I have, for example, a calibration interval of 36 months, and after the 36 months I notice that my measuring device no longer achieves the accuracy I need, then I have a time lapse of 36 months where I cannot define when my measurements were all right or not. In the worst case, that means that all the products that I have produced in the last 36 months have to be called back. That is why the question of the calibration interval can be answered only from the customer. There are, of course, exceptions where calibration requirements are required from external institutes. For example, with gas measuring devices, are from the professional cooperatives the calibration interval set. In which relation these requirements apply and who has to comply and which cooperative is worked with, this has to be checked from the customer and cannot be given from the calibration laboratory.